I hardly think the race is over. Um, you know, uh, this is not the Yogi Berra school of uh, political philosophy. Uh, it isn't getting late early. Um, and so we're going to let this play out. Uh, and I think the big loser in tomorrow night's debate has already been determined. And it's Donald Trump because he didn't have the guts or the respect to show up on that stage and Governor. defend his record Governor. and advocate Governor. for the future of America. Mm -hmm. Former New Jersey governor and 2024 White House hopeful Chris Christie weighing in on the upcoming debate during an interview with Newsmax last night. Christie will be one of the eight candidates on the debate stage tonight in Milwaukee. Frontrunner Donald Trump qualified for the event, but will not participate. Let's bring in staff writer at The Atlantic, Mark Leibovich, who will be in Milwaukee later today to cover the debate. Mark, your new piece out this morning in The Atlantic is entitled A Parade of Listless Vessels, <clears throat> borrowing a recent phrase used by Ron DeSantis. And Mark, you write in part, quote, tonight's contest will inevitably suffer from two basic structural flaws. The main point, theoretically, of a political debate is to try and persuade voters to support your campaign <clears throat> instead of the other candidates. But that presupposes a constituency of voters who can be persuaded by hearing a set of facts or are open to being educated. This, on the whole, is not the audience we have here. A large and determinative and still deeply committed portion of the GOP electorate the MAGA sector has been more or less a closed box for seven years now. The other structural defect involves the likely self-neutering of tonight's putative gladiators. Ideally, a debate features participants who actually want to win. That generally requires a willingness to attack their biggest adversary, whether he's participating in the event or not, and especially when he holds a massive lead over them. Other than Kamikaze Christie, whom Republicans will almost certainly not nominate, most of the remaining challengers on the stage seem content to play for second place. Running mate or 2028? So, um, if I get this right, you're going to Milwaukee to see a group of self-neutering empty vessels, that Mark. Maybe no one will Set watch. Set it up for us. Yeah, I mean, wouldn't you do the same? I mean, like, look, I'm going to Milwaukee. What do you do in Milwaukee? You see self-neutering empty vessels. No, uh, yes, I'm going to Milwaukee. Uh, there will be a debate tonight. What, what I'm looking for tonight is, is you know, whether there, in fact, I mean, everyone says Donald Trump steals the oxygen from an event like this. Is there any oxygen left in the Republican Party? And, and more to the point, are there people who are willing to listen to an argument or listen to any kind of counter um, narrative about you know what this party is and and what this party is ready to vote for. Uh, I'm dubious at this point, and I also think that that you know there aren't a lot of voters out there. Or the critical mass of voters out there isn't terribly big at this point, and I guess we're going to sort of see tonight how the other candidates try to divide that up. So, Mark, obviously, Ron DeSantis's launch these months and months now has not gone quite the way he imagined it would. He start com started competitive and actually led for a little while in some polls over Donald Trump. Now has fallen way back as the country has gotten a look at him. But that's m mainly people like us who follow politics closely. I think the DeSantis campaign is looking at tonight as a chance to sort of relaunch him and introduce himself to a wider audience. What is their hope coming out of tonight? And is there any chance that he goes a little harder, as he did with the listless vessel comment, and says, you know what, Donald Trump was wrong in Georgia. Donald Trump was wrong in the Mar-a-Lago documents case. He was wrong around the 2020 election. Any chance we hear that from him? I mean, there's a chance. I think that's his only chance, frankly. I mean, I think, you know, Ron DeSantis has a, an extremely tall order tonight, and, and it's a very tall order, especially since he's never done this before. I mean, this is his first televised presidential debate. And he he really has to assert himself as the main alternative to Donald Trump. People have assumed that's been his position for a long time, but he hasn't really proven it. In fact, he's been a disappointment again and again and again in the various efforts he's made to try to launch himself in this, in this race. Um, 
and so I'm you know, really curious to see if he is up to the job. I'm also curious to see if he's serious about it and is willing to really frontally attack Donald Trump in a way that he hasn't so far. I mean, he has to show or hasn't shown to this point uh, you know, whether he wants to win, frankly. I mean, he, he does, he's given off a, a sense lately that he is content to try to, you know, win a respectable second place, you know, maybe, you know, keep whatever goodwill he had coming into this for next time and hopefully, you know, make a few friends along the way. But that doesn't seem to be something he's succeeding at very well. Mark Al Sharpton, is it a possibility that tonight uh, that he, being DeSantis, uh, becomes the target of those that want to take him on under culture wars. Uh, he has led the battle of trying to uh, eliminate some parts of black history from studies, LGBTQ women. Uh, even uh, Tim Scott took issue with him about uh, whether slavery had advantages or in some ways helped uh, the enslaved. Will any of the candidates, in your judgment, take him on on that? And if so, what will that do to him? Does he dig in or does he try and modify uh, uh, the statements that he's made that has really uh, been abhorrible to many of those communities? Yeah, I, I don't see him, you know, backing down. I mean, literally, his super PAC is called Never Back Down. What I think is more interesting is, is that he... Uh, he's really bad at, he doesn't think well on his feet. I mean, he's a pretty easy target in his own way. And someone like Christie, who can be a real bulldog in these settings, especially when, you know, he, he's planned it out beforehand, can really, really run circles around um, someone like him because he's not a nimble debater at all. At least he hasn't proven to be so far. So, look, I mean, I think in the absence of Donald Trump, who I think is going to take a lot of incoming, whether he's there or not, um, you know, DeSantis is is really the biggest target, and and I think that he's got to be ready. And, and I think as he's shown again and again, he's he's not terribly good in these situations. I mean, there was a moment in his debate in his last governor's uh, race last November oh. uh, against Charlie Crist, where he, um, you know, he just froze for a moment up on stage, and it didn't hurt yeah. him because he was ahead and bold. But it was a bad moment for him.